All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. It's Jason and Lauren. We're about to hit our daily mobility work, but we are sore. We've gone through football practice. We've gone through squats earlier this week, so our legs need a little bit of extra TLC. Yeah, my legs are very stiff, so I'm excited to do this. And today we're just gonna show you our current favorite lower body mobility routine. And you only really need five minutes. As long as you choose the right drills, do them mindfully with intention, you do that consistently over and over again over the long haul, you don't really need these these like 30 to 40 minute long routine. Wait, what? But today we're gonna show you exactly how to do each movement. We're gonna walk you through the drills and we're gonna give you some little tips and tricks along the way that are gonna help you to feel like you can do them successfully. We'll also give you some modifications so you can meet yourself where you're at in case you look at it and you're like, I could never do that. We're gonna make sure that you feel taken care of and you can do this right along with us. Let's do it. All right, so first up, let's get into a 90-90 hip switch. So I'm going to get my legs into two 90 degree angles. So that front leg is in a 90 degree angle and the back leg is in a 90 degree angle. And then from here, this is our start position. I'm gonna keep my arms in tight and keep my feet where they are. And I'm gonna bring my knees up and over so I get into a 90-90 position on the other side. So we're just basically kind of trying to sink in here, trying to relax here, and then flipping over to the other side. That rotation and that movement through my hips always just feels really, really good. You're gonna be scooting like all over the place. It's totally fine. You're not doing anything wrong. All you need to do is as you're going through it, just feel free to, to adjust in between reps. Now, if you wanna modify this one at all, all you need to do is place your hands down on the floor as you're going through your rotation. So you just lean back a little bit. And then at the top, you can kind of bring yourself back to normal and then lean back a little bit like that. Sometimes if I'm really sore, that's all it really takes for me. So I'll just keep my hands back here. Or you can even just be stationary. You can just go back and forth like this. You're still getting internal and external rotation no matter how you slice it. So just as long as you're going through this rotational movement, you're getting all the benefits. What's next? All right, so next up is going to be the couch stretch. You're definitely gonna want something for your knee here, a rolled up yoga mat, a pillow if you're at home, or what we have our Eric's mats. These are super comfortable to put our knee on. But basically, you're gonna find a wall, get the pad close to the wall, and you're gonna get your shin all the way up against the wall. We actually call this the shin on wall quad stretch just to make it pretty plain and simple. But a get lot of people shin. when you say that think that you're saying S-H-I-T on wall, <laughs> which is very different from what very we're doing. Very different, so shin. Uh, <laughs> I think we should call it the couch stretch. Yeah, couch stretch. <laughs> but it's like, but, but there's not a couch. I know, I know. <laughs> but anyway, you're gonna get your shin uh, on the wall <laughs> and you're gonna stride this foot forward. And this is gonna be level one. You're gonna be right here. You're gonna bring your hips down towards the floor. I'm squeezing my glute here to get even a little bit more. And it's really gonna open up your hips, open up your quads, your hip flexors. It's gonna feel really nice, especially if you've had a tough leg day, if you've gone through a field workout like we did the other day, it's gonna feel really good. And you can either hold it here, or sometimes I like to oscillate back and forth. So I'll go in, I'll squeeze my glutes for a couple seconds, hold for a couple seconds, and then relax. So you can kind of do whatever, the world's your oyster, basically. <laughs> so you can go back and forth like that. Now level two is not for the faint of heart. You're gonna come all the way up onto your knee here and get all the way up. <laughs> Woo <-hoo. laughs> that, feels, that feels rough right now. But basically what you don't wanna do is arch your back to get here. You really wanna get hip extension. So driving your hip through, squeezing this glute and holding right here. The hot tip is to make sure you breathe. I'm reminding myself as I remind you or tell you because it's very common to, when you get into a stretch that feels a little bit intense to hold your breath, but that actually creates more tension, which actually makes the stretch harder. So the more that you can try to relax, breathe, especially more like in your diaphragm, take the breath out of your neck and your chest. Get, everything's gonna relax a little and it'll help you get into this stretch a little bit better. <laughs> I'm like too high threshold right now, I'm holding my breath. So just coming down here makes me feel like I can get a good stretch without creating all of that extra tension. For most so. of us are in this posture all the time. So to be able to bring one leg back and really get a good stretch there is gonna open up your hips majestically. That's a big word. So this side is funny because anytime you post this drill on Instagram and I'm doing the level two version, people freak out on Instagram in the comment section. They're like, where does his leg go? His leg disappeared. But movie magic, it's just back over here behind me. <laughs> so this one is really, really tight for me and I'm feeling like I'm having a hard time getting my hip to even come forward. So something you can do if you're in the same boat is actually move your knee a little bit further away from the wall. So if you can't fully get into this position, you can just bring that knee forward a little bit. So your toes are on the wall, but maybe not your full shape 
chin and then you can get into it a little bit more easily. It's a little bit less intense throughout the quad and the hip flexor. I'm very competitive, especially with myself, and so I do find myself being like, if I could do this last week, I should be able to do it this week, but this week we have had more football practices, we've lifted a little bit more consistently, and like, I'm just tighter, and so to not like put myself down for the fact that I'm doing a modification and just realize that this is what I need today, that's really important. Yeah, all right, so I got the bench here. Lauren, you wanna put the mats down? All right, let's go left foot back, right foot forward. Come on, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be the modified version. If you've had trouble with Bulgarian split squats where it feels like your back leg is killing you, it might be worthwhile to do this stretch, especially this one right here, where you can really mobilize the position first, get comfortable, and then go into your Bulgarian split squats. But basically, you can see couch stretch all the time online, on Instagram, but there's so many different ways to regress it while still getting the same movement pattern in, you're getting the hip extension, so plenty of ways to modify to meet yourself where you're at. Right, next up, we are going to loosen up the hamstrings a little bit, backs of your legs, and so we're gonna do what's called an elephant walk. I actually have no idea who called it that first or why it's called that. Um, Jason was like, maybe we should come up with another name, but I don't know what else to call it. A forward elephant hinge, walk. leg straighten, it just seems to, elephant walk seems simple enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down into a forward fold, and you can use a yoga block. I would highly recommend it unless you're somebody who can already kind of like get your hands flat on the floor. Oh my God, my hamstrings are so sore. <laughs> this is gonna be really hard. Anyway, you're gonna fold forward, use a yoga block to kind of meet yourself where you're at. So you're in a pretty good stretch, but you're gonna have your knees bent to start. And then from here, you're gonna straighten one leg, hold it for a couple seconds, relax. Straighten the other leg, hold it for a couple seconds, relax and keep alternating like that. And so basically you can see Jason's doing it with the block a little bit higher. You can do it with the block lower. You can do it with your hands on the floor if you can, which sometimes I can, but sometimes like today I can't. <laughs> um, but you're just trying to kind of get that extended stretch for a couple seconds, relaxing, switching, and you're gonna feel those hamstrings really start to loosen up the more you go through this one. Now one little pro tip here is as I'm doing it, I'm really trying to not only extend this leg and try to lock this knee out, but also I'm trying to squeeze this quad here tightly. So as I squeeze that here tightly for a couple seconds, I'm getting an even deeper stretch within my posterior chain here. I could probably force this range of motion if I wanted to and sort of fake the funk, but then I'm only worrying about that knee lockout as opposed to getting that intense quad contraction. So I'm gonna go up to here and that feels a little bit better for me, a little bit more control, and I can be a lot more active with it. And again, like we said before, just always breathing throughout it. All right, so we're three moves down. This should only have taken really three minutes at this point. Uh, we only have two more moves left. But now the funny thing is, Lauren and I, when we first started personal training, what we used to do and we used to recommend to our clients was actually like a 20 to 25 minute whole mobility routine, activation, like all this stuff. And I remember like during that time, like when we first started personal training, it was 2007. So we've been doing this for a long time now. And during that time, everything that was talked about in the fitness industry was like corrective exercise, activation work, foam rolling. So we'd have these really long routines for our clients. And then we'd have them come in even earlier to do foam rolling by themselves. So they're, they've been like throughout their whole like gym workout, they've gone through 40 minutes of stretching and corrective work. And then finally we get them through a little bit of strength training. Now over the years, we've realized that we can truncate that down. And so we've been like slowly taking that down lower and lower and lower. And at this point we found that five minutes is a really good sweet spot. All you really need is like three to five moves. And as long as you're strength training through a full range of motion, as long as you're mobilizing on a daily basis, you only need a few minutes. I will say though that one thing that people say is like, you don't have to do mobility work at all. You can just strength train through a full range of motion. And we kind of went down that route for a little bit and then we started to actually feel too stiff. Like it really was a missing piece when we took it out completely. And we definitely noticed a difference in how we were feeling and how we were moving. But adding back in that five, six minutes maybe total at the beginning of the workout, like completely changed mm -hmm. how we were feeling mobility wise. Um, so I think that there's like, there's truth to truncating it to an extent, but then also making sure that you don't just get rid of mobility work altogether because we definitely personally noticed a big difference when we started to ignore mobility work altogether. Yeah, um, I mean the in industry went from one extreme 
all the way to now, this extreme where all the optimal gym bros are like, you don't have to stretch, you don't have to do anything, just strength, train, blah, 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 blah. But I think this, this is a very small time investment to feel really good and then still go through your strength training through a full range of motion. So five minutes is really all you need, all right? Let's go on to the next one. Place her foot on the box and then we glide forward as far as <laughs> we can here, all right? Thank now, you for supporting me, I was gonna fall off. Now, I like the box because you can kind of grab on tight and use it as leverage to drive down, but you can either go like in repetitions where you oscillate back and forth, or you can just hold this bottom position. You can hold it here. Let's say you don't have this range of motion, just wherever you are comfortable, just hold it there. You can use your hands to push down even a little bit further, and you're getting a lot of good ankle, calf, Achilles benefits here as you're going through this. Lauren, just keep going through it for a second. And this range of motion is so crucial for squatting, for lunging, for split squats, and then also outside the gym as well, when you're running, sprinting, if you're an athlete, if you're doing field work, ankle mobility is gonna be super crucial. You don't wanna be in a position where you sprained your ankles a bunch and you just tape them up or wear high top shoes and try to lock it up. You wanna to try to get at that ankle range of motion so that uh, things up the chain are not affected by limited ankle mobility. So this is a big one for us. You might not even feel like it does much, but it is doing a lot, trust us. Before we move on, I do wanna show you one tip in case you are somebody who feels this in the front of your ankle as you're doing these mobilizations. That might just mean that there's a little bit restricting you from actually being able to smoothly glide that knee over the toes. And so this trick actually can really help if you are in that position. So what you need is a thin band, like a longer, Super band is what we have. You're gonna put it around the front of your ankle, kind of like where you get your movement from. And then from there, you're gonna bring that knee forward. And so this is called distraction, using a band to kind of distract the, I don't know, the, the bones apart from yeah, each other. Yeah, so basically, basically, without getting too technical, if you're feeling this sort of like locking, pinching, impingement sensation, all the band is doing is it's pulling that shin back a little bit and allowing for greater glide, greater range of motion. So if you're feeling a little bit of a block in the front, this is really all you need. <laughs> Why are we hugging? <laughs> Why would we be hugging in the middle of our mobility? We're always, we're always hugging. All right, Lauren, bring us home. Okay, last move we're gonna do is the Spider-Man lunge to instep. This is probably our favorite move of all time. Of all time. In terms of mobility, we do it. I do it before every workout. I do it before every football game. I do it before every practice. It just feels so good. And you don't need equipment. You need nothing. You just need the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into it. So we're gonna go into a push-up position. You're gonna take your right foot and step it to the outside of your right hand, trying to get it right in line with that right hand, but we'll show you if you can't go do this, we'll show you a modification for that. This sometimes for some people is enough of a stretch to really feel that back hip stretching, to feel that external rotation here, but if you want to increase it even a little bit further, which always feels good, take that elbow and drop it down toward the floor right on the arch of your foot, and then place the hand back down, step the foot back, and switch sides. One thing we notice a lot of people do is they have this foot out a little wide and this knee in, that kind of defeats the purpose of it. Just do your best to keep that foot in really tight so that you can then drive this knee out a little bit further out. If you find that your foot's out like this, and this is the only way you can get that foot up there, just bring your foot in a little bit closer towards your body and then bring it back in, that's totally fine. So this is just one simple way to modify the movement. And then otherwise, I'm gonna go grab a bench. You can grab a bench, you can grab a plyo box, you can have a chair, really anything. Just elevate your hands on and go through this movement like that. So, so many different ways to, to any movement that you see online, mobility movement that you see online, that you see all these super flexible people do, you can really reduce range of motion in all these different ways by using props, by just intentionally shortening the range of motion. It's super easy to do, so don't feel like you're doing anything wrong or you're doing a less advanced variation. You're doing the one that is best for you and your body at this time. But if you want more mobility routines like this, we have a guide called Pursuit Mobility. It's 42, it's a six week program, 42 daily mobility sessions, all five minutes long, all in the same vein. And we have follow along videos, we've got exercise tutorials, like all that is totally involved with the program. But it's really simple and easy to implement and it makes you feel really good, just like this routine hopefully does. I think that's it, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.